Hello, I'm Jacito and in this tutorial I will teach you the basics of scripting. Now if you aren't part of my Discord yet, you can join with the link in the description. So the first thing you need to do, which is essential for every scripter, is to enable the output. So go to View, and make sure Output is enabled. This window will show you any errors in your script and any prints that you make, and we will be using it a lot in this tutorial. Now we can make our script. So go to workspace and click on the plus icon. Now you can type script. And there are three types of scripts. Local, module and normal script. For now we'll just use a normal script. Now when you create a new script, by default it will say print hello world. And this is also the first thing I will teach you. So what print does is it writes something down in the output. So if you go to this part here, click on the small arrow and press run. You can see here in the output it says hello world. And if you click on it, you can see it comes from the script. So now press stop. You can type anything in here, any text you want. If press run, now this may seem useless to you, but this will be essential later on for debugging your scripts. Now next we will make a variable, let's put it above here. So a variable is just a word that contains information. And we create a variable by typing local, and then you can choose a name for the variable. Let's call it variable1. You can give it any name you like. And equals. And now you can give it a value. There are four types of values you can give variable. There are strings, which is basically text, like this. When you use text, you always have to use quotation marks. Like this. Let's rename this to variable string. So the next type of variable is a integer. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it's basically a number. So local variable, let's call it integer equals, let's say five. When you use a number, you don't have to use quotation marks. Now if you use quotation marks here, it will turn into a text. Which is very different in code. So the next type is a bool value. It's a local variable bool equals... So a bool value is either true or false. So you can type true, or you can type false. Now for the last type of variable is an object. So let's make local object. An object can be pretty much anything. Like we can use this. So now this variable is equal to this variable. Or you can use script. Now it will target its own script. So now we can use a print to test these variables. So if you copy this in here, then I'll change this to Integer. This one to pool and objects. So when you want to print different things, you always have to separate it by a comma. So now if we run again, you can see first it prints hello world, then it prints five. 
then says false, and then scripts. Now, there are a lot of things you can do with a with a variable. For example, you can do math. If you say integer and multiply it by two, then it will print ten. You can also say we'll call two equals bigger multiplied by itself if you print integer two you can see it's twenty five. Now you might be wondering why you would want to do this. Since you can just type 25 here, it will be the same thing. But for example, if you have a RPG game with a character, you can do health, local health, equals 100. And then every time someone gets hit, you can do health equals health minus one so when you want to change a variable you don't use local anymore you only use local the first time so local health is 100 and you do health equals health minus one so now if you print health it will be 99 So later on you could write the scripts, so every time you get hit, health goes down by 1. Next I'll show you how to use the workspace. So for that we use the objects variable. So when you say scripts, they will always target itself. So we use this script. So even if you name, rename this with something else, This will still target this script because it's written inside of here. Now if you click on the script and go to properties, for you it's probably underneath here. I moved it over here. You can see there are some things in here. You have to access this by writing a dot behind here. Now you can see Preferable, class name, disabled, name, parents. So if you say dot name, the variable, this variable will become the name of this script. If you say dot parents, it will say workspace. So the parent is basically what's above it. So the parent of the script is the workspace. And parent of this part is also the workspace. If you put in something inside of here, let's pick something random. The parent of this is the script. Actually, let's make this a part. So let's go to the workspace. Here it is, part. Let's drag this into our script. I'm not sure what's relative to, but let's get rid of that. So here's the other part. As you can see, it has a lot of properties. So let's manipulate this part. Let's change this color to red. Now you can do this manually, like this. But you can also do this in the script. If you change this, Now currently the part is a child of the script. If you want to reach the child, you can do dots and then the name of the part. So just part. So now this is this part. 
let's say local part equals variable object just to make it easier to read so now part is variable object variable object is script dot part so script dot part so this part is the part so just like the script to change the properties you do part dot and now you can see all the properties that you can change so you're going to change the color color okay. equals now you can't just say red as you can see it's red on the lines so it means it's not it doesn't recognize it you have to create a color value so say color tree dot new not new dot rgb so color tree dot from rgb so RGB means red, green, blue. And RGB goes from 0 to 255. So we want maximum of red. We want no green and no blue. And again, separated by a comma. So now the part should turn red. If we run it again, you can see it's red. Now again, you might be wondering why, <laughs> but you can also just change it here. But the advantage of a script is you can make it change at any time. Or you can make a weight here. If say wait five, the script will wait five seconds before it continues. So now if you do run, it's white. And now it turns red. And you can also do another weight. If we copy this, let's wait one, we paste it here. Let's make it white again. And copy this. So now it waits 5 seconds, then it becomes red, then it becomes white, then red, then white, then red. Oh right, zero means no color, so it's black, not white. <laughs> Anyway, this way you could make things like a disco floor or anything. Now let's say you want to change the base plate. That's here. You can't go down. It's not a child. And it's not a parent either. So to reach this base plate, we can say local. Base plate equals, and there are two methods to get there. The first way would be game dot, you can do workspace. Now the game is invisible, it's everything. And you go to workspace, which is here, and you can do base plate. And behind, you can do base plate. So now this is equal to this. You can also do it differently. So if you do local base plate. Now you can't have two times the same variable. If you use the same name twice, this one will overwrite this one. You would have to give it a different name. So this time we start from the script. So script. Then we go to dot parents. 
So the parent of the script is the workspace. And then we go to base plate. So this way you can navigate through the entire game, to anything you need. So if you want to change the base plate color, you can do base plate dot color equals color tree dot from RGB and then give it the color and it will be red. So for part two I will teach you how to use if else statements, functions and how you can use that to make an obby game.